Hi, Mr. Stark here, and we're going to go over the muscles and exercises of the chest. Um, last time we did this, we just did the um, exercises of the chest. Sorry, last time we did this, we did just the, um, the muscles for one episode and then the exercises for another lecture. So today we're going to combine both of them. So the muscles of the chest. There are two basic muscle groups of what we would call the chest. And that is the pectorals or the pecs and something called the serratus anterior. And there are um, something that we call synergist muscles that work in conjunction with the chest. So it's very, very rare that you're going to do any kind of exercise where you exclusively work the pectoralis muscles, which are right here. Most oftentimes, the, um, let's go back here. I'm using a new screen recorder, so bear with me. Most of the time that we do the, um, most of the time we work on exercises of the chest, we are talking about, um, you know, exercises that don't exclusively include this region of the chest, but it also uses the arms. So when you're talking about something called a synergist muscle, a synergist muscle is a group of muscles that work in conjunction with the chest muscles themselves. So for example, we'll talk later that the exercise bench press is a, is a chest muscle exercise. But when you're using um, the bench press, you're also working your triceps, your lats, your deltoids, something called a coracobrachialis. So truly there are multiple different um, synergist muscles. So a good way to remember synergist muscles is we should know this um, this word from what we call, you know, in, you might hear the word synergy. So like someone who works together, good partnership. Sometimes there's companies named synergy, and that means that something's working together. Synergize, I think, was from leader in me. So synergist muscles are the ones that work in conjunction with the chest muscles. So the pecs are typically something that's a little bit of a joke because for other than for show purposes, the, the pecs don't have a ton of functionality within movement of the body. Their main purpose is they're the most front-facing part of the, of the of a bare chest, I guess you'd say, for males. That's a big priority for them. But other than that, um, the, the chest, the pecs themselves, don't have a lot of purpose in our functionality. And even though we typically think of pecs as being something that's more of like a female, um, a female, or sorry, we usually think of pecs being a male muscle. In fact, females do have pecs. And again, I, don't, I apologize for having to show people without clothes on, but when we're talking about looking at these muscles, having a full shirt on wouldn't give you all the picture. So this woman here is very in shape. She's not overly muscular. And this line here you can see kind of created in the armpit is part of the pectoralis muscles, the pectoralis group. So even though um, we don't think of women always having pecs, they sure, they sure do. Okay, so moving on. So the purpose of the pectoral muscles is what's called horizontal adduction. So the main purpose that these muscles do is to start out in a long position and because you're coming towards the midline, you adduct towards the midline. But because it's going on the transverse plane, we would call this horizontal adduction, horizontal adduction. And there's two muscles that do this. We have the pectoralis major and the pectoralis minor. Um, if we watch this person doing a very common exercise, dumbbell bench press, we will see that his, at right about from the bottom to halfway up, his arms are very much out to the side. So he's doing this horizontal abduction with the upper arm. Even though eventually he locks his arms out, the pecs really only involved in this bottom part of this action, which is why we talked about those synergist muscles. Um, this is, the, this is an animation of the pectoralis minor. Another function of the pectoralis minor is to help with what's called scapular elevation. So it does help with the horizontal adduction coming towards the midline on the transverse plane, but it also helps with elevation of the scapula. That's the pectoralis minor. And here's a drawing of the two muscles um, kind of reflected away. So on the left here, we have underneath the pectoralis major, which is the one you would see on the surface of the skin, 
the pectoralis minor is very small and it's underneath um, the pectoralis major. So this drawing is basically as if they cut that away and then um, you could see the pectoralis minor underneath. Now the next muscle that's part of the muscles of the chest is something called the serratus anterior. So this is one that I've had students really struggle to understand. You will not often see these muscles called the serratus anterior from the skin side because we're just, usually we don't have that, that low of a body fat percentage. But in this model here, and then obviously in the drawing, we can see these little, almost look like teeth of a knife. <gasps> That's interesting because the word serrated comes from a jagged edge. Okay, so like this knife right here, like a, a commonly we would think of maybe like a bread knife or a steak knife, has these jagged, sharp teeth. That's called ser a serrated knife. So that's how I'm always good at remembering. I can always remember this ser serratus anterior is it has this synonym with the words serratus and serrated edge. Okay, but the purpose of the serratus anterior is also for bringing that shoulder into horizontal adduction or what they call sometimes lateral rotation, horizontal rotation, medial rotation, but either way it's very similar to that of the pectoralis major. Okay, so <clears throat> those of you had in my class before probably recognize this poster <clears throat> and ultimately we're using these posters as a guide for how to create these lessons. Of course I'm going into much deeper detail than you would see on the poster itself, but we're going to go over each of these exercises and how they relate to these muscles. So fundamental exercise number one is the um, bench press. So the bench press obviously works the pecs, so the pectorals, but it also works the deltoids, the triceps, and the serratus anterior. These are the synergist muscles to the, pec the, the, the muscles of the chest. So bench press is probably the most commonly performed exercise in American weight rooms, and for many, many different reasons, we can talk about it at a different time, but ultimately, the bench press is also um, something that, that can be very beneficial to overall strength. So when we're doing the bench press, we can have two positions with our elbows. If we have our elbows perfectly in line with the bar, we can get more of this horizontal adduction, which will help with developing the pectorals, but it puts a lot of strain on the shoulders and it decreases the amount of, um, amount of power we can put into the bar. So we want something a little bit lower, almost like we're starting to create a triangle between our two arms okay, and our spine. So this, this graphic here is suggesting something around 75 degrees. And the more you bring your elbows into your sides, the less stress it puts on your pecs and the more stress it puts on your triceps. That may help you lift more weight, but if you're looking to develop the pectorals, this is uh, something between the two of these is more idealistic. Um, and the other thing we have to talk about with the bench press, which is not commonly discussed, and we certainly don't talk about this with newcomers, is that the bar just doesn't go straight up and down. So in this um, graphic here, they show three different what they call bar paths. So if we look at the bar from the side, it comes down fairly straight on this red one, and it goes up fairly straight. And if we look at a very advanced lift over here in the green, it comes down in a curved um, motion and then it comes back up in a curved motion back up and this is very common for elite uh, weightlifters to do and so the point of this is that the more horizontal deflection um, coming towards the bottom of, of your chest the more development it, it creates on uh, the musculature of the chest. Okay, fundamental exercise number two is incline bench press. Really, this is exactly the same exercise in terms of the muscles that it works. And the only difference is you're on a 45 degree inclined plane. So this graphic here shows where the angle of the bench, okay, assuming you always press straight up to, straight up to the sky, straight up against gravity, the angle of the bench changes what parts of the pectorals it's, it puts more strain on it. Okay, so for an incline press, if you're at 30 degrees, you start to get more upper chest. Zero degrees of the flat bench press is kind of the overall chest. Okay, and at 45 degrees, we still keep working the upper portion of the pectoralis. Um, and then at 90 degrees, or a straight overhead press has zero pectoral work. 
Okay, so the next one is called decline bench press, okay? Um, for our weight room, we just have a mobile decline sit-up bench that we can use to perform this exercise. In some weight rooms, this is a dedicated piece of equipment like this woman is on here. Um, but the decline bench works again. It works the pecs, the deltoids, the triceps, and the serratus anterior. Um, but just like I showed in the last graphic, now again, if zero degrees works the overall chest, and if we start to lower and increase that angle in a negative direction, we'll see that it works the bottom half of the pec. So the part closest to, for lack of a better description, closest to the nipple. That's what's gonna be worked better in the lower part of the chest on decline bench. Okay, now we have an exercise called dumbbell pullover. Okay. This is a very uh, neglected exercise for working the pecs. A lot of people think this, I don't feel this, this is working my triceps. But the key to this is to keep a fairly straight, long arm and then to pivot only at the shoulder joint. So if we look at another functionality, not the main, but another functionality of the pec muscle, and that is to bring it from flexion to extension. Okay, flexion to extension. So if we take that angle and we bring it back over our head and we let gravity take the weight down to bring it to, from, from far extension towards flexion, we're going to be reversing this path that you see here on the screen. So this is a very, very, very good way to do um, development of the chest. You can do it straight on like this woman has. You can do it like this gentleman has. You can do it on an incline and you can do it on a decline. Okay, the next exercise we're going to talk about is the dumbbell bench press. This is pretty much the exact same as all the other um, bench pressing exercise in terms of the muscles that they work. Um, the only difference would be that you're holding dumbbells. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You can do this with your palms facing medially or palms facing the midline like this guy is. You can do it with your palms facing your feet or inferiorly like this woman is. Or you can do a combination where you start medially and twist to inferiorly. Um, the main other difference between um, dumbbell bench press and barbell bench press is that there's a lot more balancing muscles that have to occur in the shoulder and in the elbow. And the next exercise is incline dumbbell press. Again, very similar to that of the um, incline barbell bench press, um, except for you have the added benefit of more stabilization between the two hands. Again, you can do it with your palms facing medially, like our woman is at the, in the bottom, or with your palms facing towards your feet, or do a combination of both. Okay, the next one is called dumbbell flies. This is a very complicated movement, although it's Basic, it's also very hard to do and very often not done properly. I apologize for all these uh, videos of people without their clothes on, but this gentleman is doing the proper uh, technique. So you can see here as he goes down with the barbell or the dumbbells, you see this huge stretch in his armpit and that's his pec really stretching on the way down. Okay, And the motion is most similar to that of trying to like like this horizontal adduction. And I would say in a perfect world, it'd be like you're trying to go around and hug a tree. Okay, like the action to try to hug a tree, you wouldn't go like this to hug a tree like a press. You'd have your arms bent and you'd try to reach around. So that is the general action of a fly. Um, again, you can change your hand position a little bit, but this horizontal adduction. So flies kind of become the default best exercise for the pecs because they do exactly the same motion. Okay, uh, next is incline dumbbell flies. They're very similar to flat dumbbell flies, except for you're on an incline. And that's our last chest exercise for today.